shower. Can you put this on? Just for uh, a couple of people in the US. Okay. Might be a bit nerve wracking, so. <laughs> Yes. How, do I, how do I put it on? A total of two people in your audience. Okay. Just in the pocket? <laughs> yeah, just here. Uh, just hook it up to your... Uh... Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Just don't drop it. Okay. Do you know if there's a MacBook? Uh, do you know if there's a MacBook connector to the for the projector or no? Then I believe I'm making my dad watch it. I know there's one in the room, but I don't know if anyone has access to it. So many things happen that I like don't remember. Oh, the the, the room? Okay. Okay. Oh, did you get the cable or the? The cable? Is it missing? No, I I should MacBook. Hey. And I'm, I think I know where it is in the room. Where room Fatah? So, uh, Odi Tabuna? No, Odi Adil. Odi Adil? Yeah. Odi Tabuna, I have the key. I think Hayadi, I think so. I hope. <laughs> I hope so. Huh? Oh, I'm in mean. Uh, English player? Is there basketball? Is there basketball? Hey. Yep, I think so. Yeah, thank God. It didn't come back. No. Take off the wings. Take off the wings, bet. No. <laughs> right, I'll take as long as I need. It could be two hours. Where's your brother? Uh. <laughs> I'll be jealous like I am in jealous in basketball. How do you turn it on? Uh, how do you turn it on? Oh, fee remote? I shall know that. I shall projector. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
كده I think it's on بس maybe بنفتح حاجة do we أنا أول مرة so now we open this what do we do حاجة تانية في الأمور guys في حد شاطر في البروجيكتور روفا can you help us no أي حد how to put it on sorry هو أمير عارف Oh, with the MacBook, I don't know. It's just the projector. We put it on and opened the screen. What else can you do? Is there anything you need to do? It's not there. It's not working now. It's working now. It's working now, yeah. Give it a few minutes and then you can use these to adjust it. To adjust it? Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Which one did you say to adjust it, Rufa? Which one did you say to adjust it? Oh, okay. Yeah. And you can do the up and down as well. Where is that? So like these two as well. Yeah, so just keep adjusting it. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean. Sure. Can we all stand up? All right, hi guys. Uh, so today's talk is going to be on Saint Athanasius. Has anyone heard of him before? You guys all should have. He's a big part of our the reason why we're here in terms of our faith. All right. So before we start, can anyone tell me anything about him? What what you guys know or anything of that nature? Was he a man? Was he a woman? Come on, something simple. Is he a man? Yes. Let's make this interactive. Huh, anyone? Was he a bishop? Was he a pope? Was he a deacon? Huh? He was a deacon and eventually rose up to be pope. Exactly. Everyone hear that? Yeah. Okay. So he was a deacon and he eventually became pope, which I will touch on that very shortly. Okay. So, early life. He was born to pagan, pa uh, ba pagan parents in the year 295 to 298 AD, which is honestly... Is a pretty uh, similar to a lot of the saints in our in our church history. So he's born to pagan parents, and it happened that when he was in school, he saw some like Christian children playing outside, like he w they were doing like Christian rituals. Like they had some people as like playing as deacons, some as bishops, some as priests. And they're doing like they're just playing, right? And then he came along, and then he was interested in what they were doing, and then they made him 
like a patriarch over them in the play and then throwing them on a high place and uh, gave them honor and respect. So keep in mind, he wasn't actually Christian at this point, but he was like, because he had pagan parents. So he asked their permission to participate with them, but they refused saying that he was pagan and you're not allowed to mix with because he's not Christian. However, he answered them, I'm from now on a Christian. So it was from an early age on that he like knew about or in, um, wanted to know Christ. And at that same time, in that little play they were doing, by the way, uh, after uh, I want you guys to pay attention because there's like a little Jeopardy game after this, which is based on a bunch of these uh, uh, slides, okay? So pay attention. So at that time, Pope Alexandros passed by, uh, and when he saw them, uh, he said to those who were with them, he like noticed St. Athanasius and told them, this child would be in a great position one day. And then he took him secretly to be his own deacon, okay? So... It's literally the same around time that he, Pope Alexand Pope Alexandrus, keep that in mind, might be a question later on, took him and uh, later ordained him as a deacon, which obviously later he became Pope. All right. So the Arian heresy. Okay, before we go to that, anyone know anything about the Arian heresy? Yes, what do you know? Was it like one of the ecumenical councils? Yeah, well, it was based, like the one of the ecumenical councils was based on the Arian heresy, yeah? Um, I'm not sure if that was the same one because this one was the n I'll, 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 I'll touch on that right now okay so the Arian heresy so what they focused on this one was or and the Arian heresy in itself was they said that Jesus is a created God or a half God so he's not like he was created and he was not like really fully God okay so the person that like made or started this was named Arius and he was excommunicated on 3280 in a local assembly in Alexandria so it was in 325 then what what the Nicene Council took uh, place. So I some if you guys ever pay attention in the Odes, like part of the commemorations like and the 325 at the Council of Nicaea. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. 318 bishops were part of this. Okay, and then um, so the term uh, Omosios came out from this, which means it's Greek, which is translated in the Creed as one and when in essence with the Father. So we believe that the hypostasis is three in one. So we believe that Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit all are united in one, rather than what the Arian heresy believed as like a half God or not fully created, or like half created or a created God. So we believe that they're all in one. And so when Arius said this about Christ, that he was in similar, or said about Christ that he was similar in essence with the Father, Saint Athanasius said. One in essence with the Father, and then, and then in this manifest he, or in this fashion he manifests his excellence. So that's why he he is the one that like stepped forth and like said no, this is not this is not right theologically. This is incorrect. And so by the Council of Nicaea, he t explained this and he explained his unity and equality in the one in essence. However, the Arians, so like Arius and his followers, they refused to accept this. And so Pope Alexander, the same guy that ordained him as deacon, uh, repose, so then after that St. Athanasius was elected to be Pope after that. But however before, in the midst of all this, St. Athanasius was exiled and I'll touch up on that right now. So after, so now we are in a place where St. Athanasius took place as Pope, okay? However there's still these Arian, Arius believers that they want to like overrule or overthrow this type of like ideology that like one in essence and all that. So they want to overthrow that. So what happens is, um, under Eusebius from Nicodemia, and he succeeded the, the heresy, and he got the emperor, I think it was Constantine, to revisit the case of Arius. So this is kind of a little bit afterwards, and then he revisited the case of Arius to just like say, oh, this is like, this is actually valid. What St. Athanasius said about one in essence is not true. Let's revisit the case of Arius. So the emperor then asked Pope Athanasius to take him back but Athanasius refused to accept that because that would be a contradiction to the decision of the Universal Council that since he was excommunicated. So keep in mind that Arius was actually excommunicated at this point. However though, the Arians accused Pope Athanasius with these four charges. So this is before his first exile and these, these are the four charges. So one, that he supported, so they said that Pope Athanasius supported Pope Philemonus who rebelled against the government. That's the first one. 
And the second one, that he broke the communion cup of the priest, Exkira, and destroyed his altar. A third one that they uh, used against him was that he killed Bishop Arsenius and used his arms in sorcery. And then fourth one is that he also raped a nun. So those four they use in exile against, er, like against him to support that Pope Athanasius should be like taken out or whatever. You can like see like the details. In the Synexarium, there actually shows like a list of like these four and like how exactly they, it got broken up and how they defended against it. If you look it up in the Synexarium, it's actually pretty interesting. But just for time's sake, I didn't include it here. But yeah, those are the four that they used, they charged to quote Athanasius with. Okay, and as a result, after that, the emperor, and the emperor exiled St. Athanasius to France. So that was the first exile. All right, any questions so far? Everything makes sense, kind of? Okay. So, because of that, Arius died a horrible death. As so Socrates said, God made Arius to die in a public washroom where his bowels poured out of his body and the people regarded his death as a punishment from the divine justice. So, as you can see, it's a pretty brutal death where your intestines just fall out. Okay? Sorry? I don't know. The God's way of just punishing him. <laughs> just, it's just, just imagine how bad that would be. Okay? Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty intense. So don't, you know, don't be heretical. Don't be heretics. So two years later, when the emperor uh, heard about the death of Arius, he recognized the innocence of St. Athanasius and recommended while he was on his deathbed in the years 337 AD that Athanasius be returned to Alexandria and reclaim his throne. So after this point, the emperor, you know, you know, he like, St. Athanasius, oh, he's innocent man. You know, we'll put, like, I can, he's now free to go back to his throne and rule the Orthodox people as Pope, as Patriarch. Okay. However, there was a second exile. Okay, so these Arians were just very persistent. They kept on trying to excommunicate Saint Athanasius, and then so he, uh, Pope Athanasius, assembled a council in Alexandria. Keyword: Alexandria. Keep in mind for the the Jeopardy game. Uh, and he protested against the Arians. Then he wrote a letter to all the churches to declare his innocence. So this is like a theme of what's. Saint Athanasius did. He was so persistent in keeping the faith of the Coptic, of like the Orthodox Church. That's why, like, that's why he's considered one of the pillars of the Coptic Church and keeping its faith and keeping like against heretics and against all these people that were trying to overthrow. That's why we are who we are because we're one of the biggest reasons because of Saint Athanasius. So, although Pope Athanasius wrote this letter to the churches, the Arians influenced uh, Philogorius to help install their appointed patriarch Gregory. So, so he was a bishop before and they appointed him instead of St. Athanasius to become uh, patriarch over the churches of Alexandria. And then that like also influenced Emperor Constantine. Uh, sorry, Constantian Constantius. So the people of Alexandria were horrified and decided to resist. Like, so they also wanted to like, you know, we don't accept this. But the Arians actually attacked the churches in Alexandria on Good Friday and they like, raped and slayed many of the worshippers. Okay, so it's pretty like, pretty like messed up things that happened. And Pope Athanasius sought the help of the churches in the world, and he left his chair, and then he traveled to Rome. So that was part of his like second exile. So initially he went to France, and then second one, he went to Rome, and that was the second exile. All right, good enough. Uh, I don't know what happened here. Okay, so some Egyptian radicals rose up and killed Gregory, uh, so the newly appointed patriarch in 349 A.D., and then Saint Athanasius returned for the second time to his chair. And then the people received him with joy, and he, uh, Gregory the Theologian, a different Gregory, the writer of the liturgy, like we hear in the liturgy, St. Gregory the Theologian, described this reception saying, The people came as the flood of the Nile, and he also came, and he pointed out to the palm branches, the carpets, and many clapping hands. So the people were happy that he came and reclaimed the throne, as he should, because he didn't do anything wrong. So four years later, uh, four years later, Constance dies, and Constatius becomes emperor, where he reconvinced Saint, reconvicted Saint Athanasius. So he goes in exile for a third time. Okay, which is like, if you guys like think of this as it is back then, it's like just on and off, on and off, and like, he's just trying to help like reestablish the faith and keep it as it is. But people weren't like up for that, and so he would come back and re-exiled an additional two times before that. And he finally returned to his throne for three, seven years before he reposed in 373. So, I just wanted to let you know that he spent seven years in hiding during that time between the second and third exile. And during this period, he wrote a famous uh, homily called Against the Arians, which is that book. I think it's like translated in English. 
It's a pretty um, well-known book, which is like describes his time and against like describes against like the Aryans. Okay, so in total, he went into exile Saint Athanasius for five times. Okay, so and then finally after that, like he finally. Uh, was able to be ruler for seven years until he reposed in 373 AD. Okay, so that was pretty much the life in terms of Saint Athanasius as like steps of what happened. I didn't go into obviously I didn't go into detail of the detail of the councils and all that, but I'm just trying to give you like a little timeline of what happened. Okay, any questions so far? All right. So Saint Athanasius theology. So the main theme in, the, in his theology is to seek and keep the divine truth. Because as we see how persistent he was in keeping the faith, I think it's our obligation to do the same. Okay, So he never gave up on the faith and he realized the position of the Arian heresy and how it would destroy the faith. So the Arian theory of a created God to create the world would have destroyed the salvation of mankind. Because that's not actually what we believe in. All right, The whole Christian world owes it to St. Athanasius because uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, the whole Christian world owes it to Saint Athanasius because, for keeping the Orthodox faith, as I said, he worked very hard to take to make the Nicene Council adopt his Orthodox teaching. Whereas, if it wasn't for his persistence, they could have just easily went with the Saint Arius, or sorry, the Arian um, philosophy, but they didn't. So, as he refused rightfully to accept. Uh, his, uh, they re rejected his Arius teaching. It was just a simple error, but a whole doctrine, a new philosophy that would change the Christian dogma from its roots. So this is really pivotal in what is now our Orthodox tradition and our dogma. So our new dogma is is based on polytheism. Polytheism, okay, and it's based on the one divine essence rather than like, as I said before, half an essence or a created essence, where the three hypotheses are one and equal. The three in one, as you hear a lot of the time in the Odes, one is the Holy Father, one is the Holy Son, one is the Holy Spirit, they're all equal and one. Called, and these are considered the hypostasis. And so Saint Athanasius concentrated all his apologetic works on the core of the Arian heresy without getting distracted to these other side points and side views and things which have no meaning. Okay, so I just want to point out that heresy, which was the Arian heresy, this word comes from the Greek word herasis. Okay, and this is which is pretty much just means denial and putting doubts in the teaching of the church, which is handed down from the apostles. So, usually a heresy is like a full philosophical doctrine that depends on a mistake or a deviation in one or more subjects. So I'm just letting you know if you guys ever hear of like a heresy in future references, just know that it's like. And what it essentially means is a mistake or a deviation from the truth, from orthodox teaching. And so in return, the orthodox response will have a point or more to correct and fix this wrong doctrine, as St. Athanasius did. And an example of this was obviously the Nicene Creed, and what was added after the Constantinople Council, which was one of the other count, uh, councils, as we've mentioned, or as Alex has said, which is the Constantinople Council. Okay? I want to say something, but I forgot. Hopefully I'll get back to it. Okay, so the core of St. Athanasius' philosophy. So according to St. Athanasius, salvation means to be saved from eternal death and to be in union with God. Let me repeat that. According to St. Athanasius, salvation means to be saved from eternal death and to be in union with God. Keep that in mind. It's very, very important. So in the incarnation of the Logos, with the Word, He took flesh, who is Jesus, a perfect human and a perfect God in unique mystical union, this what brought the human nature to salvation and this was the core of St. Athanasius' teaching. Okay, so it goes back to what I mentioned before about the hypothesis with three and one. He, uh, perfect human and perfect God and unique mystical union. Okay, so they all unite together in one, like in three and one, in one unity. And this is what brought the human nature, us, to salvation which salvation means for us to be saved from eternal death and to be in union with God. So the church can live according to him on this truth, the true God and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the premise of what St. Athanasius was trying to preach towards and trying to, you know, give us now. And the same true, same and true Jesus is taught and offered by the church in a miraculous way through the sacraments. 
So Saint, <coughs> sorry, Saint Athanasius' teachings. So one of his, te I'm just going through what he has offered, contributed, other than the council. He has wrote an essay against heathen and one on the incarnation, and this goes back to his early life. Um, there is no mentioning of Arius in these two books, so I'm sure it was before the council. And in the first of these books, he talks about the falsehood of idols and then the true way to God through meditation in God's creation and its magnificence. And then in his second book, he talks about the truth in the incarnation and how it is the fulfillment of the prophecies. And then later, other writings included his interpretation of the Bible books, but unfortunately many of them were not, uh, they were lost with a few exceptions found on the Psalms and Matthew and Luke. And those are like teachings who were unfortunately gone. There were also four essays he wrote against the Arians, and most of these were written during his third exile from the time of 356 to 362 AD. And then finally, there were four letters to Ser Serabion, Bishop of Team, on the Holy Spirit and his equality in essence in response to some Arian teaching that the Holy Spirit is created. And then finally, a fifth letter about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So what I'm trying to say is, to conclude, is that St. Athanasius has played a really pivotal and vital part in who we are today. So I think it's very important to not only take his lesson as a reminder for us daily, but to also, when we get a chance, especially if someone like asks us in school or, or if, if we hear something that's not, you know, theologically correct, we should like fix it and play our part in keeping our faith in our role, just as St. Athanasius did for so many years and, and like did so much stuff and actually was like pun punished for it. We should do our job as well in keeping the faith and just doing like a little minor job and helping us to keep our role as Orthodox Christians. Okay, um, that's the end of my, my presentation. Do you, have, you guys have any questions? Sorry, it's very short, uh, 10 minutes sh too short, but we'll make it up for in the Jeopardy game. Any questions? Nothing? Okay, thank you guys. Yes. When was he pope? Like when was he appointed pope? Uh, it was between, so it was, when, it was when in the beginning where he goes. It was after he became deacon and to the pope. We're between Saint Pope chosen. <laughs> it was before all the like the council. But when he was in council, he was still pope. <laughs> How many teams do you guys want for the two, two, two teams? Yeah, two. Do you guys want to do boys versus girls or what? Anyone have any preference for how many teams? Uh, two. Two teams? Three, yeah. Okay, two, two teams. <laughs> okay. Split it up. Oh.